And we welcome you inside the Browns facility here in Berea, Ohio. I'm Jason Gibbs alongside Andrew Gribble. Episode 5 of the best podcast available. Training camp edition. Gribbs, uh, a newsworthy day again today out on the practice field. Not for the right reasons, however. Some injuries happening, namely Mac Wilson the starting linebacker for your Cleveland Browns, second-year player from Alabama, carted off the field with a left leg injury. Gribbs, what is the latest per Browns PR? Yeah, what we know right now is that it's a left knee injury and he's going to undergo some further evaluation. So uh, that's all we know at the moment. Uh, I would say from from our perspective, Jason, it didn't look great uh, to see a a player go down like that. I think it was during the seven-on-seven drills and – he he got up, made, tried to get up, then, then kind of fell back down and was helped off the field by some trainers and then ultimately was, was carted off. A very emotional kind of moment for, for Mac, who's a kind of a hard on his sleeve kind of guy. Uh, and so we'll, we'll just kind of be anxiously awaiting and, and hopefully it's one of those things where he can come back at, at some point here and, and hopefully you, you hope for the best and, and it's not, not, not the worst case scenario. Yeah, I, I think all of us, in taking a look at that video, we're all kind of cringing, uh, especially those of us that have that have had leg injuries like that before. Um, not a good sign. Hoping for the best, wishing the best for for Mac Wilson, but uh, we'll wait and see what the medical staff has to say. In the meantime, um, it's not. Uh, it, it's not like there's 10 linebackers <laughs> in our linebacker room. So who steps up right away uh, in the, into that lineup spot vacated by Mac Wilson right now? Well, I think the, the long-term answer for you would be Jacob Phillips. I mean, he's, he's, he's the player you drafted in the third round uh, out of LSU, the leading tackler from the, from the SEC last year. He's got the pedigree, uh, but he's a super young guy. I and mean, he's going through his fourth on-field practice in the NFL right now. So, uh, I would imagine he's kind of your, your long-term option at the position. Uh, I think a player with out of that group with maybe the most experience uh, would be Tay Davis, uh, who helped this team last year, joined midway through the season, and was really uh, a spark plug on special teams. I thought he provided a jolt of energy for that group and played really well in that area. But uh, he was the guy we saw that kind of filled in uh, during practice today. So uh, it's going to be a hodgepodge of that. I mean, you obviously, when if a player like Mac is, is out for the while, uh, out for a while, you're you're going to scour what's out there in the free agent market. You're going to look around to see what other, what other teams have. So I think that it's a pretty significant blow if he's going to be out for a while uh, to a group that was really banking on its young guys to 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 help out. So uh, we'll see. I mean, it it remains a wide open competition and uh, opportunities uh, abound for for guys to step up right now. Yeah, at a number of positions because uh, the MASH unit is, is growing here in Berea. Unfortunately, you know, as guys start to ramp up and work their way up to September 13th and that starting uh, opening game in Baltimore. Nick Chubb, the update on him today. He is in concussion protocol. Pretty much what we thought yesterday, Gribbs, that uh, he would be in there. Um Time to return is TBD, but the good news is, as we talked about a little bit yesterday, that running back room has a lot of guys in it that can contribute to this football team over the next uh, couple weeks, if need be. Yeah, and Kareem Hunt had a great practice today. I mean, a couple of big runs uh, out of him. Just he looks to be at at full speed. I mean, remember last year, he really wasn't practicing much uh, because of the the sports hernia injury he had. Uh, So we didn't get to see much of Kareem Hunt last year at training camp. So we're seeing the full – uh, a full dose of him today, and he looked great. So hopefully you get Nick Chubb back out there soon. You don't need to rush him back, but uh, we'll wait and see how these things can take as short as a, a few days, or they can be a couple weeks. So uh, it'll kind of be a daily watch uh, on Nick Chubb. Regarding uh, Larry Ogunjobi, that was the surprise today as we started practice. Uh, not a mention of him by Coach Stefanski in his press conference. But then we get out on the field, Ogunjobi not practicing on the Browns live set. Afterward, he did join Nathan and Josh Cribbs, and he said, I'll be fine, kind of laughed it off. Uh, We find out late today, held out of practice, uh, a little groin injury. So the soft tissue injury is unfortunately creeping in on your Cleveland Browns. 
Yeah, you know, it's just it's the, this is the thing you you worry about when you get guys out of not practicing for five or six months, and so you just have to hopefully avoid the major injuries. And, and unfortunately, today I uh, hope you hope that you you avoided one today. Uh, we'll, we'll wait and see on that with Mac Wilson, but. Uh, the key is September 13th. Even as much offense and defense as you need to install, you got to get these guys ready for September 13th. And if that means resting guys for a few days here and there, uh, that's what you do. No Damian Ratley again. Uh, he's battling a soft tissue injury. And one has to be concerned, uh, the longer that he doesn't practice, does it hurt his chances of getting a spot in that wide receiver room? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting competition. And it, it's one of those where – we're watching some guys make some plays. I mean, we've seen Jojo Natson be really active uh, with, with sometimes the first team offense out there. And then uh, on the second team group, we're seeing Donovan Peoples Jones. We've seen Kadero Hodge. And ultimately the, the thing that Ratley does well, that gives him a chance no matter what is first off, he's probably one of the fastest guys in the room and, and gives you a, a great deep threat. Uh, and two, he's good on special teams. And I think that's going to be ultimately the determining factor on figuring out the final few spots in this room. So Hopefully for, for Ratley, he showed what he can do with that deep touchdown in the, in the season finale last year against the Bengals. Uh, he's proven it at a level that a lot of those guys in the room have not. Uh, so it, it'll be it'll be something you hope to get him back soon and and really uh, help out Mike Pre for as much as you can because th this is an offense where you're going to see two two wide receivers out there a lot and and some guys filling in here and there as well. Yeah. Now the good news is today at practice, uh, Landry and Carl Joseph. Uh, back on the practice field, maybe a little more limited than, than normal. But Landry caught a couple balls uh, in, in some seven-on-seven seven and 11-on-11 11 11 drills, and uh, Joseph on the practice field as well. So, again, taking their time, getting those guys back up to speed. But nice to see those guys out there for the padded practices today. Yeah, and both are clearly on some kind of plan. They've, they've talked about being on a plan, and the, the, it's definitely a plan. So whether or not they're going to be out there tomorrow, I mean, we'll see. But – uh, there's clearly a method to the madness, but honestly, I got to be honest. I, I feel like I'm seeing Jarvis Landry do more than maybe I expected uh, at this point in time. I thought it was going to be one of those things where we're getting near September and wondering when he's going to you really uh, get the, the Corvette out of the garage. And uh, we're, we're seeing plenty of them are already for me to feel, feel comfortable enough to think he'll, he'll be ready to go when that opener gets here. All right. So that's a look uh, at the injury updates. A lot of them to go over, a lot of them to discuss practice today uh the second day in pads essentially just the second practice based on the first two being considered otas per the head coach of the browns uh second day of training camp practice in pads gribs your biggest takeaway from the day i thought it was a much better day for the offense and i think they got off to a little bit of a rough start early uh with the underthrown deep ball to odell that was picked off by by denzel ward and uh, but then you, you saw them find a rhythm, and you know, it, 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 and it was where Baker Mayfield goes to usually find a rhythm, and that's to his tight ends. And I think you, you saw a lot of Austin Hooper today. Uh, he was catching a bunch of passes, and that, that was where the group found maybe some of their best success today. And I, then as the practice went on, you saw Odell get more involved, Jarvis Landry get more involved. So clearly, compared to yesterday, just a much better day overall, throwing the ball for the group. And, you know, a couple big plays – one was on defense, one was on offense that got people excited. Uh, one of the maybe more popular guys on the team, Terrence Mitchell, breaking up a pass near the sidelines. People went nuts uh, just going, getting excited about that. And then uh, with the backups, you saw Case Keenum connect on a very deep ball uh, to Jamon Moore. So uh, a little bit more fireworks on both sides of the ball today, and I think the, the perfect conditions kind of uh, added to that. If you had to give a game ball today, yesterday, no game balls. No. Just a bad day. Chalk it up, move forward. Would you give a game ball to anybody today? Yeah, I would. I would give it to Austin Hooper. I, th I think he just it was – the presence was felt. Uh, and it, it's there, – there were so many different moves over this offseason, and we really didn't have a normal timeline to process them. But, but getting Austin Hooper was a big deal. And I know he, for a very brief amount of time, was the highest-paid tight end in the NFL. Uh, Browns had two of those guys, by the way. Highest-paid tight end and highest-paid defensive end both didn't make it to camp that way. Uh, but that, that – that's just the way the NFL works. But, you know, Austin Hooper's one of the best in the league at his position. I mean, that's what he's proven the last couple of years. And tight ends, at, he, and he's hitting the prime of his career. I mean, the tight end is a tough position to master as a young player. So he, he's, he's hitting a position where, where you're expecting big things out of him. And 
I would say today was a day where uh, he played like it. And I think Baker Mayfield is a quarterback that really is at his best when his tight ends are playing well. I mean, you look back to Baker's rookie year, he was getting guys like Darren Fells involved, Njoku had a big year. And then even last year, some of his best games is when he's finding Ricky Seals Jones for, for plays. It's just one of those things that really gets Baker in a rhythm. Uh, and I think that uh, clearly uh, it was on display today with Hooper. Yeah, uh, I would definitely go Kareem Hunt uh, for a game ball today. I would also say Dearness Johnson had a couple nice little plays, had a couple, had a big run at the end of practice, that whole running back room. And I think uh, there's a little bit of competition for that number three spot between Dearness and, and Dontrell Hilliard. And we'll be interesting to see how that plays out because again, we talk about number one and number, you know, one A and one B at wide receiver. It's one A and one B at running back, but you got to have a guy back there just in case. And who would be that guy that would step up uh, and be the, uh, be the sixth man as you will. And I, I think there's a little bit, uh, a little bit of going back and forth between those two running backs uh, here in camp. But uh the earnest with a couple big plays as well. Whose stock is up after four practices? Ooh, that's a tough one. I would say a guy that to keep an eye on, and he got a lot of uh, reps and snaps today with the ones, is Jordan Elliott. I would keep an eye on him and, and really getting an opportunity now with, with Larry uh, missing some practice. I, I think he's been solid, and he's going to have to be. I think that they're, they're going to – the, the pressure maybe fell on him a little bit more when Andrew Billings opted out. Uh, he's going to be a, a key figure on that defensive line. We saw how much the, the backup defensive tackles make impacts in games. Uh, he's someone that, that I've liked what I've seen so far from him out there. You know, it, it, we, I had it in the rundown for later on in the show. We're going to move it up. Chris Kiffin at the podium today had a lot of praise for Jordan Elliott. Was, uh, was very impressed. And then almost – almost looked like he tried to pull it back a little bit as the presser went on. You know, you don't want to give away too much, but uh, he said he still has a, he's still raw and he still has a ways to go, but they really like what they see from Jordan Elliott. I think that is painfully obvious. And you, you mentioned it, you know, with guys going down, there's a lot of playing time. We talked about the linebacker room. We talked about the wide receivers, but, with Ogan Joby and Miles out, it's created some opportunities for guys to get some much needed snaps that maybe right now with only X number of practices in this ramp up period that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Yeah, and Jordan Elliott really finished his college career on an ascent. You know, I think he finally put it all together in that final year at Missouri. So, uh, and, and some services ranked him a lot higher than others. So, clearly a lot of upside. And I, I think the Browns uh, got a solid player who's going to be. Uh, a contributor. And I, I look at those first four rounds in the draft uh, and I'm, I'm seeing already that those guys are in position to all be contributing right away this year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Delp it out on the field. Just <laughs> it, it's so impressive folks. Uh, we've talked about it, but him out there on the football field, his figure and his imposingness, even if that's a word, I don't know. Gribble, is that a word? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll go with it. Uh, <laughs> He's, he's pretty impressive on the football field, and he's starting to play with some confidence here the further we go and with every practice. Yeah, and he, he was back with the twos today, but it's just a player that you know is going to play this year. I think it's just a matter of how much and, and where it's going to be and, and how he works in uh, that rotation with the defensive backs. But uh, clearly moving around very well, uh, has a skill set that, that clearly looks like looks like a first-round pick out there, even though you got him in the second round. And, a lot, of, a lot to be excited about with Grant Delpit so far. All right, that's a look at what happened in practice number four of the 2020 ramp-up period. Time now to introduce our interview of the day. That's right, coming back in, coming back in strong. Our player profile, Andrew Gribble, had a chance to sit down with our rookie tight end, Harrison Bryant, who uh, – is flying under the radar, but only because of what Hooper and Njoku are doing on the football field right now. But Bryant making some plays of his own. He had a few minutes to sit down with us earlier today. Have a watch. Have a listen. All right. We're joined by our rookie tight end, Harrison Bryant. And uh, Harrison, just kind of walk me through what these uh, first couple of days have been like of, of really going at it on the practice field. Yeah, the first few days have been um, been good, been productive, uh, just trying to really uh, – 
come in and take advantage of the, the opportunities that I get on the field, um, whether that's special teams, offense, and really just be productive and, you know, do whatever I can to make the team and uh, help the team win. What's it been like for you to kind of spend months uh, preparing for this, you know, intellectually, learning the playbook and, and doing everything virtually? What, what's it like to then translate it to the field? And, and, and has it gone better or maybe has it been tougher than, than expected these first few days? Yeah, I think the, um, the virtual all season personally helped me in terms of learning the playbook and stuff. A lot of virtual meetings with uh, Coach Petsing, all the other tight ends, uh, offensive stuff. And uh, the transition so far on the field has been good. Obviously, there's uh, mistakes here and there in terms of uh, mental mental stuff like the playbook. But uh, for the most part, it's been pretty smooth and just continuing to study the playbook every night and just go out on the field and execute. And, and I know you knew going into this that this is an offense that really favors the tight ends. But what's it been like to see it? you know, actually come to fruition? Because I'm when I'm watching practice, I'm seeing you, I'm seeing Austin Hooper, Dave Njoku catching a lot of passes out there. Yeah, um, obviously coming in, I knew Coach Stefanski and uh, Coach Van Pelt, they like to feature the tight end. So I knew that our tight end room is extremely talented all around. We're um, really balanced and there's a lot of playmakers in our room. And so far we've just gone out and, you know, made plays when the num our numbers are called and just doing whatever we can to help put the team in the best position to succeed. How much has it helped you to be around a guy like an Austin Hooper, who is, mm -hmm. is probably where you want to be when you get established in this league, two-time Pro Bowler? I mean, what what has he done to help you out there? Yeah, um, obviously extremely talented. I've uh, been from Georgia, watched the Falcons a good bit. Um, he made a lot of plays, two-time Pro Bowler. And really everyone in the Titan room has um, been around for at least one or two years. So and they've been productive as well. So just to learn from them and especially him, just pick his brain and, you know, he, he'll, if I'm on the field doing something, he'll try to give me little pointers and stuff to, you know, just help my game. So, so far it's been uh, really good being in that tight end room because they've uh, welcomed me with open arms. What's, what's the bigger uh, jump when it goes for, to college uh, to the pros? Is it, is it the blocking or is it the, the, the involvement in the passing game from a tight end's perspective? Um, I would definitely say, the blocking just in terms of uh, the matchups you get because the DNs are bigger, especially coming from Comp to say the DNs are you know, bigger, faster, and everybody's really fast. So just the speed of the game. And, and then also the playbook, um, a lot of verbiage, a lot of motion and stuff. So just staying in that study and, and just trying to go out and produce. And when, when this kind of all hit after the draft and you got the feeling that, that you wouldn't be here uh, in Berea, at least in the spring, what did you do to, to kind of adjust what you maybe had planned on doing from maybe a physical standpoint and also from, from the mental standpoint? Yeah, um, obviously, usually rookies come in right after the draft for uh, mini camp and stuff, but uh, we had a virtual rookie mini camp. So the biggest thing for me, first off, was to, you know, get in the playbook and do whatever I can to pin down as much of the stuff as I can before I didn't really know when I would be here, but I was just trying to learn as much as I could and then, uh, in terms of physical stuff, just uh, continue to work in the weight room, try to put on as much weight as possible, and then get out on the field with quarterbacks whenever I could. So it, it was just, uh, for me personally, a normal offseason because, I i mean, I've never had a real NFL offseason. So I was just trying to, to work and get prepared to come here and, and just make a good impression. Who did you get to throw your passes during this time? Um, some guys from FAU, uh, old quarterbacks there, um, current quarterbacks there, just – whoever was in town and we can meet up and find a field that was open. Cool. And, and then just from the physical standpoint, you said you're trying to gain weight. What, what, what was the, the goal, I guess, you had mm -hmm. coming in here? Yeah, just coming in, um, weighed in at the combine around 240. was trying to be between – just maintain that really, 240 to 245, and successfully did that. And then now here with, um, you know, the strength staff and Katie, the nutritionist, they've really helped me out in terms of getting me everything I need and to maintain stuff through camp and, and try to gain weight. I guess we we heard from Grant Delpit earlier this week and, and asked him about the different preseason and it's almost like it's an advantage for a rookie because you guys haven't been used to a normal NFL mm -hmm. offseason. This is what you've gone into. What What is the mindset that you have to carry going into it, knowing that you have no preseason games and then mm -hmm. that first game, uh, it really matters? Yeah, you, um, you know, coming in, you just got to be prepared. Like I said, uh, that was my big thing. Um, was learning the playbook and, and just being physically ready. But but then we didn't know we wouldn't have any preseason games. Um, once that preseason got canceled, you you really had to come in and, and make an impression. 
during practice and in special teams, uh, whatever you can to, you know, get on the roster and and then make it to game day and be able to get out there and help produce. What's it been like uh, getting to know Kevin Stefanski kind of in person and, and kind of that experience and, and what's he been like as a, as a coach for this team? Yeah, um, obviously I got to meet Coach Stefanski at the, um, the combine and the interview with the Browns. Um, I could tell right off he was a really smart coach, um, really nice guy and becoming to learn him, like learn about him and, and meet him in person and stuff. Um, he's all about the team. He's all about working and he's all about winning. And I think those three things are big and uh, so far it's been really good. And what, did, what, what maybe have you liked the most about this offense and, and what do you think it can accomplish this season if it's all clicking the way you guys Yeah, um, you know, everyone knows that there's all the pieces there. Um, extremely talented receivers, extremely talented O-line, extremely talented quarterback. Um, good tight end room, you know. Um, it's just about us coming together and really working together and uh, clicking on all parts and just going out and producing winning. That's the bottom line is just a win and whatever you can to produce and help the team is all that matters. I know in traditional years, the rookie class gets a lot of time together to bond and, and kind of form a, a group. And this has obviously been different, but what have you guys done to kind of have that rookie bonding that, that maybe happens in, in usual years over the spring? Yeah, during the spring, it was, uh, we had a hour meeting pretty much every day, um, a rookie meeting where we would uh, just talk and have guest speakers come in to try to teach us stuff about what we were gonna experience. Um, you know, but other than that, we weren't able to really get around each other too much because we didn't have mini camp or OTAs. So really this was the first time we were all meeting in person, but uh, the virtual meetings definitely helped out in terms of getting to know some of the guys and, and now we're in the building and, and just continuing to bond as a team. And when you walk into the facility for the first time and go through a practice, what's what's the biggest thing that stands out where you're like, this isn't like college anymore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming from um, FAU, a small school, um, you know, just being in this facility and around these players, extremely talented. Um, you know, it was eye opening and I'm just extremely grateful to be here. And, and just like I said, go out and produce and make the team and help the team win. Now, when you guys go through a practice like Mondays where, where the offense doesn't have the, the best day out there, what is what, what goes on in those 24 hours to get you ready for that next practice and, and kind of bounce back? Yeah, so like you go in, um, you know, watch the film, make corrections. Um, obviously, I mean, every practice there's going to be some, some mishaps, some MAs, um, physical mistakes. So we just go in and uh, correct the mistakes on film and then, you know, come out and have a better day the next day. And then you, you mentioned the importance of special teams. Clearly for a tight end uh, like mm -hmm. yourself, it's going to be important. Is that something you have a lot of experience doing, or how, and how has that been adjusting to that? Yeah, um, in college, didn't play much special teams. A little bit freshman year, but other than that, none at all. And uh, so far, I've been, I, I feel like I've been done pretty well in special teams. Coach Prefer um, does a great job working with us, teaching us the techniques. Um, it, the techniques are big for a guy like me. I've never played special teams, really. So... Uh, just picking his brain and learning all the stuff and watching some of my previous guys that have done the techniques has really helped me out and, and just going out and executing during special teams drills and during special teams team periods. So it's been good so far. And then just for you and, and, the, and the guys getting out there back on the field, how, how much excitement was there to actually get out there and start playing football and being around a lot of people after I imagine months of really not being around many people at all? Yeah, um, you know, we, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if we'd have a season. Um, so for me personally, just being able to get into the building as a rookie and, and meet all the guys and meet all the older guys, the veterans, and just pick their brain, it's been really cool. And there's a lot of energy around the building, and we're just looking to, you know, keep getting better every day and, and come out with a winning season. And, you know, we have high expectations, so uh, set the bar high. Yeah, and for you, just how much, how much are you thinking about September 13th, going to Baltimore and, and really mm – -hmm getting your first real NFL experience, even if it's not going to be in front of the most fans out there, but, but just mm -hmm. to, to get that first game, how, how much is that kind of hanging up there for you right now? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've thought about it a few times. People ask me about it. Um, obviously, it's going to be extremely exciting. But for me personally, like as a rookie, I'm, I'm trying to just improve every day, um, focused on training camp right now and, and just continue to improve and make the team and do whatever I can to help the team win. Well, Harrison, thank you so much, and, and good luck with the rest of training camp. Really good talking yep. to you. Thank you. Thanks to Harrison Bryant for a few minutes of his time. A pretty impressive young man, Gribbs. Uh, every time he talks, he, he commands the room a little bit. And the more he plays, the more confidence he's going to get in this National Football League.
Yeah, if, if we're keeping unofficial stats at training camp, he's he's probably the leader uh, in, I would say, receptions. I've seen – I just keep seeing him make plays with the second team. Clearly he's established some good chemistry with Case Keenum out there, and I, I think he just looks the part so far. Uh, and I, I, we, I always, with rookie tight ends, you just have to temper a lot with those because it's such a tough position to make an impact as a rookie. But I, I do think he's going to have a role somewhere on this team this year, and uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised – to see, you know, even three tight ends out there at some point because uh, the head coach loves tight ends. All right. So how much of his playing time uh, in this 2020 season will be dictated by how well he can block? I mean, I think that's huge. And he, he talked about how that's been the biggest adjustment. I think the, the passing and catching, that comes naturally. It just moves at a faster pace to the NFL. But, you know, now this is not Conference USA anymore. I mean, this is this – is, he's dealing with some, some big players – that he's trying to block. And I, I think that that's going to be always something that is going to be something he works on. Cause he, he talked about having to, to really focus on maintaining his weight at 245. So uh, that was a focus from on the, on the off season. And that'll be what he focuses on now that he's in the building. So got to get bigger and stronger and, and still be able to catch those passes like he has been so far. All right. So the tight end room has Hooper in it. It's got Najoku. It's got Farrell Brown, Steven Carlson, Harrison Bryant. Uh, I, I would think we maybe go with three tight ends, maybe four tight ends. Um, there, there is a stiff competition there. There, there are some guys, and, and Carlson flashed and has shown some moments. We haven't seen a lot from Farrell, but I, I think Farrell has battled the injury bug a little bit. But he's shown a little bit and given you a little bit of a taste of what he might be able to bring to the table. A pretty competitive tight end room. Yeah, you know, I, I think Farrow's strength is obviously going to be blocking, and I think. That's how he quietly had six starts last year. And he you, you lined up in with a heavy package, and, and he was out there for the first couple plays of the game. So it's just going to depend on what they want out of those uh, final couple spots. And, you know, as we were talking about earlier, remember you're keeping a fullback this year. So does that affect your numbers at tight end, or does that affect your numbers at running back? So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I liked what I saw from Steven Carlson last year in, in small doses. So – uh, it's going to be competitive. And it's, it, it, I would say this early in camp, it's, it's hard to read. And without preseason games, it's going to be even harder to read. Yeah. Uh, it, it really just – the no preseason games just affects so much, especially on the back end uh, and the special team side of things. That I, I think it just impacts those two areas more than any other area in terms of being able to make sure um, – you know, Chris Tabor used to say it, that bottom 10 of the roster is almost as important, if not more important in certain aspects than some of the guys toward the top end of that roster. Yeah, and, and that was that was something that Harrison talked about. He, he didn't play much special teams in, in college, so uh, that he's going to have to play a vital role in, the, in that area. And, and that was always – it's always – that was the way we cheated, Gibbs, in the preseason. We'd always know – who maybe those final guys were just on how active they were. That, that, was, the, that was the way to look smarter than someone else uh, when watching the, the team. You look who's on that first team special teams, good chance they're making the team. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We move on to Wednesday, another day in pads, another practice for your Cleveland Browns. Again, they'll go through Thursday, off day on Friday, and then back at it for another five days starting on Saturday. Gribs, what do you want to see tomorrow? What are you most looking forward to seeing tomorrow? I just, I just want a full practice of 11 on 11 because that's been the, that's been the fun parts uh, so far, and I think that we, we've seen a, it's just been gradual, the steady, steady increase. I thought we saw a little bit more of it uh, today. I imagine we'll see a little bit more of it tomorrow in pads. I mean, this is, this is where you test the guys. Fourth day in a row, they're tired. Uh, you want to see how they're handling everything, both mentally and physically. So I'd expect maybe one of the more entertaining practices tomorrow. Looking forward to it, hoping that what you're saying does come to fruition. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe today to the best podcast available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Browns. We are back with you tomorrow on Wednesday, episode six, practice number five of the 2020 ramp up period to the September 13th opener in Baltimore. For Andrew Gribble, I'm Jason Gibbs. Thanks to Jeff McDaniel for all of his hard work as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the best podcast available.